Today on Fishing with Gussie, we head out on Lake of the Woods during a cold, blustery day. Then, Jay Samsel and Scott Dingwall take over in search of whitefish. Fishing with Gussie is proudly sponsored by and uses Shimano rods and reels. Visit Shimano.ca for all the specs. Fishing with Gussie only hits the ice with Strike Master augers. Simply the best ice fishing experience. Yeah, this should be the spot, buddy. Today, we're ice fishing, and we're fishing for the king of under the ice, the king under the ice, lake trout. We're in sunset country, and hopefully, we're going to catch some big fish. So let us get some holes drilled. I got my buddy Darren Bohannis from Humminbird with me, and we're going to try and catch some big lake trout. We're fishing uh, a real sharp wall here, and there's a little uh, you know, a 10 or 12 foot little reef that sticks out off the, off the shore and it really breaks off. It's a wall and it's going to go out to 50 or 60 feet, down to 70 feet. And what happens is these lake trout will push bait, smelt and whitefish and ciscos up against this wall and that's how they catch them. So Darren's going to come behind me with his depth finder and just sort of let me know how deep it is while we're going here. And we want to get, you know, fairly close to the edge. So. I fished this spot before and caught them pretty good, and I know that close to the edge are usually the better holes. Oh yeah, look at that. 43 feet. Yeah. We'll show you this more in depth here in a minute, but you can see we don't have a real strong bottom signal, and we're getting a reading from 35 all the way down to about 48 feet almost, and it's broken up. And what that's telling us is this is the transducer signals hitting the bottom in a few different places. So that means we're right on the edge. So that's perfect. You might as well get your bait down there and yeah, I'll drill a few more holes in the general area here. Gotta love the Strike Master. Starts on the first pull every time. <laughs> They're usually in a pretty aggressive mood during the winter. They're cold water fish and, and I like to think of them, we're fishing for big fish today. There's a lot of lakes, you know, across the region where you can go and catch smaller, smaller fish and catch big numbers of them. We're probably not gonna get big numbers today, but we've got a really good shot at catching some of the biggest lake trout that you've ever seen. And that's what we're gonna try to do. So as far as tackle goes, um, that being said, with go fishing for big fish, you want to use a bait that's going to be able to get their attention and, and be able to call them in from a long ways away. And they're eating minnows. Um, I mentioned earlier smelt, ciscos, whitefish, that sort of thing. And so that's what we're going to be using is baits that imitate those bait fish. So I'm just going to throw on a little Trigger X minnow. And these are one of our favorite bass baits. Just a little Northland Mimic minnow jig. And lake trout, they like white. Obviously that's sort of a natural color to imitate these minnows, but I found that they really like a little bit of chartreuse in there too. So, so what we'll do sometimes, you know, say you have a bag of white tube jigs, we'll actually put a chartreuse tube in there and it just kind of dyes them a little bit. But I'm just using sort of a bright fire taggery chartreuse head on there. And that's, that's my bait of choice. Yeah, I got a heater on, it's nice. There we go. I don't know what we got here. Actually doesn't feel super big, but action's always good, right there? Absolutely. I don't, oh. Oh, there you go. Look at that. <laughs> nice one, eh? Guess we'll take it. Absolutely. 
Nice fish. Walleye while we're trout fishing. <laughs> well, I kind of figured it might not be a trout because it, it, it actually came up pretty hot, raced up and hit my bait, but uh, I raced up, looked at my bait, didn't bite it, and I actually gave it a couple pretty aggressive jigs and it smashed it. So, so what we're going to do, we're actually going to keep this fish because I just caught it out of 56 feet of water and you can see that's his air bladder sticking up and that's kind of an unfortunate thing um, but he probably he won't make it if we let him go no, so we'll keep him and he'll eat good. But. Absolutely. Well. Darren and I are going to take take our stuff pack it up and move to another spot we've given this about an hour and uh, no trout so in the meantime we're going to take a break we'll be back fishing on another spot for big lake trout. Our luck turns around, coming up next. Hi, I'm Darren Bohannis with Humminbird, and I'm out here fishing with uh, Gussie, and we're out uh, trying to hunt down some lake trout, and we're using our Ice 55s, and one of the nice things about these Humminbird Ice 55s is most of the operations are pretty much automatic. As soon as you turn it on, put it on A, which is the automatic mode, and you'll notice right away that you get your depth rate out, so you can see instantaneously exactly what depth you're at. From there, you can fine tune your gain adjustment. What I like to do, and you might be able to see on the screen there, is you see two separate marks. The top mark is actually the swivel that I have in my fluorocarbon leader, and the bottom mark is actually my lure. What I'll do is I'll actually dial down my gain to where my lure just disappears, and then I'll turn it back up to where I can see it again. And that's pretty much a sweet spot where you want to have your gain adjustment done. Um, as far as your beam select goes, this is a dual beam operation from a little bit wider beam to a narrow beam. This particular version here, the Ice 55, is also incorporating the 385 CI combo, which is a GPS sonar. A great function. Just because it's winter time, you also want to be able to incorporate GPS into your fishing. It has a Navionics map chip in there so you can see where you are. You can go back to your spot time and time again. And it really is a useful tool for you to incorporate this type of technology, uh, whether it's the summertime or wintertime. But again, just because it's winter, make sure you incorporate electronics into your fishing. Yeah. A little better. That one will eat. Huh. Well, the walleyes are definitely turning on after four or five hours, whatever we've been out here of not a pile of action. I'm gonna take it. See, we put a little journey on and see what happens. <laughs> it's not huge, but it's better than the last bridge I got. Oh, it's just unbuttoned. You know? <laughs> They're getting bigger. <laughs> Slowly but surely. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're starting to get a little action here. You know, we, uh, we've been trout fishing and the trout fishing has been really tough today. We actually haven't even, haven't even, uh, I haven't even really marked one that I think was a trout. Darren had a couple chasing them maybe earlier, but uh, it's just been a tough day. And so we're on a spot now where I had a guide trip a few days ago and we actually caught some really nice walleyes here and we caught two nice trout here while we were walleye fishing. So we've been fishing the deep water stuff and just figured we'd move up and try and get a little bit of action and hopefully uh, maybe we can get lucky and get a trout doing this. So that's what we're doing now. My line's a little bit froze up here. It's kind of chilly out. Let's try to get him up here, see what he is. There's a the leader. Oh yeah. Nice walleye. Nice walleye all covered in snow. Yeah, we can do that. Nice colors on them. There's a good size right there. Beautiful colors. 
Nice. Yeah, we're gonna keep this one. We're gonna add them to a, the other one we have there and have a bit of a feast later. Awesome. So the people that just showed up here, that's my regular fishing buddy, Jay Samsel. So this is what happens. They've had a tough day today too. And if they actually, if they see us fishing somewhere, this is what he does. He, he just comes and pulls up like right on top of our spot. He knows how good we've been, we've been hammering them all day. So they came and, and pulled up. Well, if you're gonna, if you're gonna bad mouth, well, you better let me defend myself a little bit here. But yeah, it was a tough day. And I'm gonna come take some of your bait too. All right. So yeah, take steal, spot stealer, bait stealer. <laughs> I'm just kidding, everybody. What are what are buddies for? Right? Yeah. <laughs> no, we've all had a tough day on the lake, and that's uh, it's actually I got lots of excuses. Uh, it's cold out. There's an east wind, and we're trying to do a TV show. And when you combine all those things together, it's gonna make for probably not real good fishing. <laughs> So that's my excuse, but you know what we're still having fun and There's like a hundred worst places. I could uh, think of where we could all be right now. So We've got it pretty good. Hello We got something big <laughs> That was so weird. I I, uh, I dropped it down there and I jigged it like three times and then all of a sudden like my bait was out of the screen and it was like almost like slack in the line and I <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is, it feels like it might be a trout, yeah. trout or a pike. The elusive lake trout in Northwestern Ontario. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get in some of these spots too. No, no you don't. And that's just it, yeah, you just gotta be out here to oh, yeah. make it happen. Oh, it's just a little small laker, hey? Huh. See the bubbles coming up the hole, they, trout, are one of the only species that has the ability to adjust their air bladder so that when they come out of deep water they don't uh, they don't get sick but this water that we're fishing today that's actually the smallest lake trout that I've ever caught but yeah cool just uh, look at that beautiful pretty little fish <laughs> that pretty much matches what we've sort of done today and are yeah. fishing for the day but I've never seen one that small. <laughs> hey we got a lake yeah. trout that's nice to see that they're absolutely spawning out here and beauty. Get her back. Good job man. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Jane and Scott are taking over. Let's see if they can hold up to my standards. It's gonna be a good day. Catherine Rind and I'm from Dryden, Ontario and we're out at the fishing derby today and it's been a very exciting day. <laughs> There's a lot of people out here fishing. Uh, we all piled into the boat and we went I guess near Mile Lake somewhere in there, Wabagoon Lake and <laughs> my dad was just casually fishing and uh, he was oh, I think I have a bite. And we're all looking at his rod and it was bent and I said, I think you got more than a bite there. <laughs> or nibble. And so, and so we all kind of helped him because his rod was just bending and bending. We said, oh, it's got to be a log, you know, because <laughs> he's really get up. <laughs> And so finally when we got, oh, it's a snapping turtle. So, so Leo holds it in with the net and yeah. And, and we were all kind of just looking at the snapping turtle going, oh, wow, it was all exciting. And <laughs> my dad, he just looked with amazement. He said, oh, wow, I just love this. He goes, I didn't catch a walleye. I caught this big snapping turtle. <laughs> Thank you.
Oh, we're hooked up with something little. <laughs> I don't think this is a white fish. It feels like a perch. I got one going here. Oh, that's a whitey. Oh yeah. Okay, good. Davey, come on over. I got one following too. There's two of them down there. <laughs> we get the flasher out of the way here. Coming up pretty easy though. I don't know. That's a whitey. Yeah, that's a whitey. There we go. Grab it right out of the way. Grab him. Good start. All right, here we go, boys. I guess uh, I guess we don't really need Gussie here. We're taking over the show. Taking over the show today, yeah. Gussie's uh, he's at a wedding seminar this weekend and not able to make it. So I got Dave Bennett from Bennett Outdoors, Scott Dingwall with me. We're on Shoal Lake. We're catching whitefish. So uh, should be a fun day, boys. Gussie's not here. That's fine. He's got <laughs> no, bigger things. We can things. chirp him all we want to. He's yeah. not here to defend himself. That's right. That's perfect. There's but one. There's one. All, right. all kidding aside, Jeff's actually down in Florida. He's getting ready for an FLW event. Kind of living the dream. Hey, this was my last day in Florida, and I had some of my buddies out from Comfort Maker, Temp Star that uh, supported me and helped me fish this FLW tournament down here this past week. And I've been down in Florida for a few weeks and those are the two biggest bass that I've seen down here the whole time. And what a, what a day, man. This place is awesome. Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> That's sick. And uh, we're up here in the frozen Arctic. On live, Shoal Lake, living the other dream. Li living the other dream. So <laughs> it's gonna be a good day. It's not a white fish. There we go. Whitey? Uh, it's either a small white fish or a Walter. Jumbo perch. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Little bit of everything out here. That's a. Oh, I might have to. Holy sh. <laughs> yeah. So, we're gonna take just a quick second here to talk a little bit about what we're using for these whitefish out here on Shoal Lake today. Um, I'm a real big believer in jigging spoons for these things. I tend to like to use the smaller sizes. I do have a variety of larger sizes with different colors. Be a little experimental, find what's working. It's good to tip these things with a little piece of Trigger X maggot, just a little scent, a little more flavor for them. Be versatile, be on the move with them, and you're gonna catch a pile of these things out here. They're a lot of fun, they're real popular. Don't miss this, it's coming up next. Go. That's a nice one. Right on. Beauty. Some pliers here if you need them. It's a nice sunset country whitefish. Beautiful. Yeah, these fish are. Uh, I mean, you can see they got uh, they got big eyes. You see well, clear water, and uh, you know they're uh, they're a lot more aggressive than people think. They. Uh, you know, they have no problem chasing down, even though they got a relatively small mouth, they have no problem chasing down, uh, you know, open water bait fish. And so that's pretty much where we're targeting them today. We're targeting these fish, uh, you know, we're fishing this, this ledge adjacent to the, one of the deepest basins in the lake here. And we're targeting this transition zone, uh, right kind of where the rock meets the soft bottom. And, uh, yeah, he'll go. There he goes. So that's uh, that's the scenario we like to, to look for at, at this time of year. You know, being midwinter here now, um, 
Later on in the spring, a lot of these fish will start to move shallow and we'll target them in some of the shallow bays. Uh, but at this time of year, we look for that deep water, the transitions from the deep water to the shallows. And, uh, you know, these fish, they can be up in the water column, they can be down in the water column. So a lot of times it's just a great idea to cover, cover the water, go down to the bottom, fish down there, and then come up and work your way up close to the top and then back down. Uh, days that you do find that they're riding real high, a lot of times you can slide right up onto the shallow area of the shelf and that's where you'll find the most of the fish and other days they're going to be backed off uh, closer to that basin area. One thing with these is they're just so they're so fragile, like their gills, and um, when you, when you're landing them, you just have to be careful that uh, that you don't damage gills or anything. They're more prone to bleeding, it seems, than say a walleye or lake trout, that kind of thing. So we're gonna do our best just to take them off pretty quick and get them back without without hurting them. Because we're not planning on keeping any of them, I don't think. So uh, it's always a challenge. I mean, they're. You get them out of the out of the hole and they, they go nuts. <laughs> just keep on fighting. These things are just all muscle. Talk about eating it. I don't know if you can see in there, but that thing choked it. Alright boys, so I guess it's kind of that time of day. We've we've put our time in, covered a lot of ground today. It wasn't an awesome day, but we put some fish on the ice, so I guess you can't ask for too much more. Absolutely. And Weather's nice. Exactly. Yeah. Sunset country. Yeah, we had to scratch around a little bit, but uh, hey, that's fishing and uh, hope everybody enjoyed. We certainly did. Yeah, for sure. All Good right. job, man. Put them back. Thanks, Scotty. Fishing with Gussie proudly uses Power Pro Super Slick Line. Power Pro, all of the power with none of the noise. Fishing with Gussie only hits the ice with Strike Master Augers. Simply the best ice fishing experience.